I got no problem how it's handled. I, I think there should be things done, you know, from a, from a bigger picture where, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of things that could be done. Uh, you know, one is, uh, you know, everybody's got uh, red shirts or things like that. Uh, should they be given a chance to play um, like football does, where then, you know, give them back their, if they play in three or four games, can we give them back? This is a unique situation. Uh, did we need more time? Do we need a week? We could have got, or we could have rescheduled games. I don't know how some of these games are going to be rescheduled. I really don't. I'm, I'm not in the mood to do what we did last year. We played four games at the end of the year, eight days or something against top four, top five teams. I'm not sure that's fair either. So uh, this is a weird situation. I just think there's got to be uh, more communication in the big picture and figure out what are these vaccines, who's vaccinated, who's not vaccinated, who's got their booster, who's at risk, um, so you know on the front end instead of, you know, maybe, and I still don't, I, I mean, I don't know, I don't know any any teams. It's not, it has nothing to do with Michigan, it has nothing to do with anybody else. I'm just a bigger proponent of the bigger picture. You know, are we playing with seven? Are we playing with six? Are we, they said seven, but then they always throw the caveat on unless it's detrimental to you. Well, that's like, you can transfer once and be eligible, unless you appeal. <laughs> then maybe you can again. I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't see that. So, um, you know what, it's uh, how it was handled by them was fine with me. Uh, it was uh, difficult timing for everybody. And uh, maybe we learned from the NFL and NBA, you know, where I don't know if there's got to be done more the day before. If we're not fully vaccinated, we have to go back to testing every day to protect those of, those that, you know, the best you can. Is contact tracing involved in some of these teams? There's so many I don't know that I think we, we should know. Now, maybe it's my stupidity, too, so maybe I'm throwing myself under the bus. But... Uh, it's a tough situation for everybody. I mean, tough for them. I'm sure they had big crowds. Uh, uh, we had people that flew in for the game. Um, it's tough on them, it's tough on us. But the, it's the toughest, and I think everybody should understand this, toughest on the players. Uh, you know, every time you get a sniffle, you're wondering if you got COVID. And, and that's difficult, so. Uh, I just think uh, the best thing would be is to, you know, what are the rules on vaccination? What are the rules on booster? What are the rules on, is it five days? Or is it five days and then we retest? Um, again, I might be throwing myself under the bus, but I know there's a couple conferences that are playing no matter what. I know this was a huge TV game. And uh, I feel sorry. For, I feel sorry for everybody, but I just not sure that uh, we have enough straight, strict rules. And I think there should be more transparency on all of us on whether you know we're vaccinated, not vaccinated, um, whatever those rules are. That's me. I'm, I'm wondering from, from your teams that you won eight in a row, you had momentum and then you kind of get the brakes put on it mm -hmm. on Saturday. I guess, how do you approach, how have you tried to approach that in the last few days to, to keep that, to, to put that in the past, I guess? That's a million dollar question that I, I think um, we did just that. We gave Saturday off and said, hey, listen, this is, this is gonna happen. It could happen again next week, could happen the week after. This is the card you dealt, and he who handles adversity the best is probably going to be the most successful. And I, I do believe that. And uh, so I said, uh, you know, it's tough on their players, it's tough on our players. Um, and yet we had momentum. Uh, how do you maintain momentum? We make, maintain momentum by worrying most about ourselves. You know, let's do what we got to get better at, and that'll take care of some things. Let's not worry about any other team. Uh, 
uh, I just worry about how Michigan State handles things. And, and I told them, it's, uh, you know, we've been fortunate. We've had some kids get it. Um, and uh, we've, we've found a way to get through it, but uh, there could be more kids that get it. And I bet you my biggest worry is uh, starting today, you know, there's probably, I don't know, if there's 50,000 students here, probably 48,000 are, are back because last year a lot of them stayed home. I don't think that's happening this year, you know. Uh, so that means we're going to be in contact with more kids, whether we're in class or not. So we've been preaching the masks, you know, we are all totally vaccinated and, and are totally boosted. So, I mean, I don't have to preach that. Um, I'm preaching to give us the best chance that we believe here, not everywhere, but we believe here, give us the best chance to either stay COVID free or to be in a position where the recovery is a lot faster and safer. And uh, and that's what we're doing, you know, this five day thing now that change with the CDC, um, that helps some. And yet uh, the momentum that we have, we still have. We didn't win another game, but we didn't lose a game either. We could have done both. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're as healthy as we can be as far as COVID, we're as healthy as we can be as far as injuries. So we have a lot of things to feel good about, and that's what we're going to do. We'll feel good about the good things and try to move forward. You know, I, so many strange things that are happening the last couple of years, you know, just like our schedule. I mean, by the end of this week, we'll have played Northwestern and Minnesota twice in the first seven, eight games. Of, you know, it's the way it is, the way the scheduling is. I mean, I can blame KP for that. I can't blame anybody else. I guess he's involved in that. I, I don't like that. Personally, I like it better when we, you know, I like I like it better when we play a team first and then first the second half or something. But it doesn't work out that way, and that's what happens when you get bigger leagues. But uh, these are strange things that you got to deal with, and at the same time, you got to make sure you keep your perspective on where your team is. Don't be fooled by who you played and how many times you played them. And, things like that. So there's a lot of different things we have to deal with now that we never had to deal with three, four years ago. For the record, Tom, my next dinner early is until 6.30 in the morning, obviously you knew before that. Mm -hmm. You went down there and you shot. When did Juwan call you? When did you find out there was no game? I found out about quarter to 11. The night before. Yeah, night before. And, you know, we didn't, uh, we didn't get it out. We, um, I mean, I don't even know where the process goes from there. Thank God he called me and then Alan called me. I don't know if the ADs talked, I don't know if the commissioner was involved, I don't know if the people at the Big Ten office, I really don't know. Um, but he was kind enough to call me and uh, and then, uh, you know, we just, we didn't think it was right to we're in the hotel, so we just uh, stayed there and got up at 8.30 or 8 o'clock and left by 9. And, I read the release, in terms of the reschedule, that's, that's to be determined. I mean, not a lot of time to put this in, in your schedules, is there? No, and I just saw with hey, uh, is it public that, yes. they're, it has, that they're not playing Purdue either? Right. Uh, I don't know what their schedule is compared to ours. It's got to be similar. And, uh, you know, this year we didn't... Uh, put a week in there that we could make up games. So uh, it creates, you know, some problems, but it's the way it's gonna be, it's the way it is. And that's why, uh, you know, we're in the situation we're in. I mean, uh, we can't do anything that's an act of God. And uh, we're just gonna have to play by the rules we're dealt. I just, I just keep hoping that at least the things we can control would be more out in front. Yeah, Tom, I had a question about the reschedule too. I mean, you mentioned there's not as much flexibility. It seems like it would be hard to get a date that, you know, equal to both teams as far as dates off beforehand, you know, before the road game after. I mean, do you have input on that or the parameters as far as how that gets rescheduled at all? You guys have been with me the last couple of years. Do you think I've input on anything? 
I don't have input on whether I take the garbage out or not. I get told that at home. So um, I, I have no idea. Um, but uh, I will answer this question, but then I want to move on to Minnesota because I, I don't have an idea. It's, it's, I'm not, no, I have no, no say right now. I mean, I'm not going to, um, I'm going to play every game I can play. Okay, I'm gonna play every game I can play. I said that last year, you know, we came off 17 days. We played three days after we started practicing, got our brains beaten for three games. But I still hope that we'll all play every game we can play. If we don't have enough players, it happens to us, and we're down to five players or whatever situations are at different schools, we won't play either. Thank you. But if we can, I wanna play, and I, uh, I just, uh, I don't know how they plan on doing this, but it's going to be hard. You know, last year we had a week that they had kind of put in there. Am I right, Matt? Am I right, Matt? Well, not only that, you didn't, didn't have you didn't have fans, so it became easier to, to move games. Yeah, it became easier with fans uh, to move games, but but we also had a week in there because for the most part, some of us played over Christmas to try to give us that week and then a couple of teams had more than one day and that made it really difficult uh did we have well we had a couple games and i think one of our great issues was it was during one of our bye weeks when yes. we were out so we didn't have as many games to move but uh you know we had that uh that hasn't been done this year because we didn't play over christmas or this is the problem with scheduling right now when you have the two Big Ten games early and you're trying to get all these games in before and then a lot of teams now are going, not because of COVID, just because of finals. I mean, what the hell that concept started? I thought we were, thought we were going like the NBA or NFL. I mean, but we got classes to go to. So because of finals, um, you know, there's just so much time if you want to give them a Christmas break and be humane, it's, it's hard to put everything together. And scheduling is so much more of a problem than you would think. And then when you got like Michigan State, where you got the Gavin Games, the Tournament of Champions, the ACC Big Ten Challenge, and still want to play in some events so you can play 31 games, that's not conducive to spreading things out because they all happen at a certain point in time. And you have, we have no control over any of those dates, not in zero. So, I don't know. I, you know, I mean, I, it might sound to you like I'm complaining about it, but I'm not. I'm just telling you that this is tough on players, it's tough on coaches, it's tough on fans, and it's probably even tough on the media. But it's, uh, it is what it is. And like I said, you, you play with the cards you're dealt. So I can't, I'll close this part of it only because I, I don't have any, you know, you guys should be calling the people that do have say in this, because it sure as hell isn't the coaches. But um, we have no control over whether somebody gets sick. We have no control over, um, that I know of, I have no control over when they reschedule. I'm sure somebody will say, are you okay with playing You know this and this? Um, maybe I'll have an option, I don't know. Um, but, uh, I think that too should be defined. If you have so many days of practice after you're healthy, then you should play. If you have so many days, um, so many guys out, then you shouldn't play. I mean, I think all those things should be clearly defined and not left up for, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, uh, I talked to one guy in the uh, uh, Big 12 that, uh, and they played with very few guys and only one coach. And we can play with one coach and seven guys, but then there's some leeway in there. So I don't know. I'm just I'm just hoping that my guys don't talk to anybody that come back from school uh, for the next two months. And uh, we stay as healthy as we can stay. And if we get sick and we can't play, uh, you know, We'll do everything we can do, like I think all these schools will. But uh, 
a lot of question marks on what's going on because I think, to use your words, um, maybe this is one time we're not transparent enough. And I don't think, personally, the HIPAA Act should be um, in this, you know, like it is with those others. Because I think this is, could affect a lot of people's lives. And, and I agree with Michigan if that was detrimental and they did the right thing. And I do agree with us that we do it. But I think we should be up front and talking about those vaccinations and what we, whether people believe in them or don't believe in them, at least we should have the ability to say, hey, this could happen, this couldn't happen. My biggest one is, is there contact tracing? I don't, I don't know those. And it could be my ignorance. I just haven't seen that out there. So back to Minnesota real quick, because we got a hockey guy here that wants to talk to you. And uh, if we talk about Minnesota, I'll answer a couple more questions. Stephen Grant. Uh, Tom, I know it wasn't that long ago, but in the time since the last Minnesota game, how have you just, how's your team grown and changed? How have you seen them grow or change at all? Well, it's funny. That's a good question because I watched the film of the last Minnesota game. And I said, God, we're a lot better, you know, and uh, it's hard to say if they're better. You know, they got beat at home by Illinois. A lot of us could get beat at home by Illinois. And, uh, you know, that's... Uh, that's tough when I mean, they played at the Illinois at home and they played at Indiana and they gave Indiana a hell of a game. The Illinois at home handled them, but I think the points in the paint were like 38 to 10 or something, you know, it was, and that's a lot because of Kofi and their inability to have a guy. So certain matchups might work bad for us, might work bad for them, might work bad for somebody else. So um, I think they're playing very well. And uh, yesterday I thought they played pretty well at, at Indiana. and. Uh, and I said they got two guys that are dynamite players, and, um, and then their role players have played their role. So uh, I think we're definitely better than we were then. But uh, you know, we still got to make shots. And the funny thing about basketball is you can you can play so good and not be because you know, Dan's here. But that's always my frustrating thing with hockey. You know, you could take six thousand shots on goal and get a hot goalie and let them go in, you know, well, we could get a lot of good shots, and uh, it's one of those days the shots don't go in, and, you know, in football, usually a bigger, stronger, better team wins, and our two sports, what the hell did we pick these two sports for, Dan? Um, we're stupid, okay, um, that's a good, good, good point, and uh, I do believe that, though, you know, that things can happen in our sports that are a little different, usually you keep peppering that that goalie, something's going to go through. I've seen a couple times when they don't go through. You know, usually you get good threes after good threes, and all of a sudden you're three for 20, and you say, God, I, 19 of those were good shots. And that's the hard part about conservative sports. All right, Tom, the idea about keeping momentum, I, you've had games where you've played better than you have in other games, but there hasn't been a game this year where there was like a no-show, a lethargic effort. And I'm wondering what you sort of attribute that to with this particular group, and do you now sort of trust this group at this point that they won't have that game? That's a million dollar question. I think I do trust them more. I think I have a little better leadership. I think Gabe has brought energy every game. I think Malik is starting to get a little better. I think our point guards are getting a little better, and I think our staff has done a, even a better job. You know, I mean, uh, I know this will sound crazy, but I'm probably not on the normal as a roller coaster, uh, to be very blunt and honest with you. But, just trying to figure out that these kids have a lot on their plate too. And the new rules put a lot on their plate, the transfer stuff puts a lot on their plate, the COVID puts a lot on their plate. Uh, um, you know, I would like to wake up every morning, which we all do, and say, oh God, I you know, got the chills today, or I got a little sore throat, or I, you know, right now. Well, when those guys think it, up until a couple weeks ago, they're thinking, man, I'm gonna miss 10 games, I might miss, or 10 days, I might miss four games. And that's stressful. So, I think we've all done a better job of, uh, I think we, my staff, I think we've done a great job of trying to manage that situation. And, uh, but I think the players are the key, you know. Um, we've had two of these, and we've kind of talked them through them now. Christmas, you know, because you don't want to beat the hell out of them, but trying to always make it, listen, our goals here are to do this, and to do that, there's a process, 
And even though there's not a process in most of life, there still is a process in athletics. And that's what I'm harping on every day. There is a process. And to go from A to B, you know, you gotta, you, you know, you gotta do something. And that's what we're trying to do. And I, I don't know, momentum, you know, scheduling has something to do with it. I mean, I don't know how to say this without insulting myself or our opponents, but you look at our schedule and in the Big Ten, we play some of the teams that have been picked by you guys or by the coaches in the bottom half of the league. You know, so sometimes scheduling helps you get momentum. Uh, just like, you know, you win four or five in a row because of your schedule, you know, you play four out of five on the road in a, you know, a top team like a Purdue or Illinois at home, you can lose five in a row. And that's what I'm going to keep perspective of too for our team as we move forward. But the nice thing about winning is there is a hunger to, there is momentum, there, there is a feel good. And uh, we haven't played quite good enough where there's a cocky feel good. There's always been enough that has happened at the end of some of these games where you still get to coach the next day. And as all of us would probably admit, it's a lot better to coach mistakes after a win than it is to coach mistakes after a loss, unless you have a team that just can't handle success. And I don't think our guys are, they have enough humility, they know we're not, uh, you know, aren't, aren't ready to beat the world, but we're making some progress. And I think you're seeing what I told you you'd see at the beginning of the year, a lot of teams that have been up and down. There's some weird upsets this weekend, you know, and um, I said that was gonna happen. I believe it'll still happen and we're a team it could happen to too. So I'm trying to keep things in perspective. Coach, the way in which that first game went against Minnesota, they scored 40 in the second half. There were, early in the season, it was the second half where you were struggling. The last two games in the second half, you guys have really produced a lot of great moments. What is it about, what has changed that's made the second half more of your strength in this season so far? Well, I give Mel Tucker a little credit. I told my team, you know, that they've been a, a great second half team the whole time. And I, I did talk to them about that, you know, we have to finish stronger. I'm gonna give Mel some blame that we haven't followed him. You know, they started out four out of six games where they had a touchdown, I think, on the first play, wasn't it? And it was ridiculous. So my guys, what I'm trying to do is, can we get consistent and start good and finish good? And if we do that, um, we're gonna be a lot better off. But I, I do think we've harped on the finishes. I think we've talked about the second half stuff. Um, and I think we have enough depth then it shouldn't be from fatigue like some teams. So, uh, you know, we just, uh, what you emphasize is what you get. So somebody should say you should emphasize a good start and a good finish, and then we'll all be happy. Appreciate it, guys. Sorry I can't give you anything else, but uh, trust me when I say that uh, as far as the coaches, everything was handled perfectly and uh, it's just a tough situation. When it's your rival game, you always look at it differently. If it was Indiana, Purdue, it was different than it was Indiana and Minnesota. You know, if it was it just the way it is, even though they all come one, as George Perla said, um, sometimes the rivalry game comes to the Thanks.